We must listen to survivors, and every day we must seek to stop the criminal behavior that has hurt so many. That's Susan Collins, a deciding vote to confirm Brett Kavanaugh, a U.S. Senator from Maine and a beacon of moderation, until she's not, which is often. Susan Margaret Collins was born in Caribou, Maine, to an upper middle class family deeply involved in state politics. Both her parents served as mayor of the town, and her father was also a state senator. Collins attended Caribou High School, where she participated in the Senate Youth Program. In 71, the program flew a 17-year-old Collins out to Washington to meet with Maine's two senators, Ed Muskie and Margaret Chase Smith, the latter of whom would have a huge impact on a young, impressionable Collins. After a nearly two-hour meeting with Chase Smith, Collins was motivated. I left her office that day thinking that a woman could do anything. From Caribou, Collins went to St. Lawrence University, where she graduated magna cum laude with a BA in 1975. After college, Collins interned for Bill Cohen, the first Republican in the House to vote for the impeachment of Richard Nixon. She was hired on and moved to Washington, where she'd spend the next 12 years working as a congressional staffer for the moderate congressman. Cohen's former chief of staff said, Susan was doing pretty serious stuff, high-level Senate hearings at 26 or 27. After her long stint with Cohen, a politically seasoned Collins returned to Maine for the lobster. Lobster is great. Ah, uh, just kidding. She worked as a business commissioner in Governor McKernan's cabinet for five years, and then, in 1994, she ran for governor unsuccessfully, receiving just 23% of the vote. Still better off than that lobster. Any time of day. I could eat it breakfast, lunch, dinner, midnight, 6 a.m. In 1996, she won the Senate seat left open by her former boss, Bill Cohen, where she'd be for the next few decades after winning re-election three times, which is longer than she said she'd be there. I have pledged that if I'm elected, I will only serve two terms, regardless of whether term limits law, a constitutional amendment passes or not. Twelve years is long enough to be in public service, make a contribution, and then come home and let someone else take your place. Collins' 12 years were up over a decade ago, but who's counting? In the Senate, Collins has championed the moderate label. I'm consistently sought out by both sides for co-sponsorship of bills. I have a lot of power. I like that. And in the past, she did reach across the aisle. Collins voted against convicting Bill Clinton during his impeachment trial. She has voted against efforts to define marriage as between a man and a woman. And from 1997 to 2016, she voted with her party on party line votes only 59% of the time, when the average senator during that time voted with their party roughly 90% of the time. But ever since a former steak salesman narrowly won the presidency, Collins has, for the most part, been in lockstep with the steak man. In 2017, Collins sided with the Republicans in 87 percent of party line votes, the highest percent in her time in the Senate. She voted for the passage of a massive tax cut for the richest families and biggest corporations. She voted to confirm Neil Gorsuch. She was one of the earliest supporters of Jeff Sessions' bid to become Attorney General, a guy who said he thought the KKK were okay until he found out they smoked pot. She voted against Betsy DeVos, perhaps knowing Pence would break the tie in the Senate while allowing Collins to maintain her moderate label. Who knows? And then there was a super beer fan and accused sexual assaulter Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh. At first, Collins appeared undecided. After hearing Christine Ford's very compelling and painful testimony, I thought, oh my goodness, uh, he perhaps needs to withdraw. But after Collins heard Kavanaugh scream at Amy Klobuchar about beer, she believed there was no way Kavanaugh did this. I do believe that she was assaulted. I don't know by whom? So what you are telling us is this could not be a case of mistaken identity? Absolutely not. Although there is no evidence supporting this claim of mistaken identity, Collins thinks that her support for an accused sexual assaulter over the survivor will somehow result in more women coming forward. The one silver lining that I hope will come from this is that more women will press charges now when they are assaulted. Collins was accused by critics of acting undecided on the vote to appease the Democrats in her state. Their evidence? Just a week after Dr. Blasey Ford testified, in an airtight, well-thought-out, written speech, Collins spoke for 45 minutes on why she was backing Kavanaugh. Therefore, I do not believe that these charges can fairly prevent Judge Kavanaugh from serving on the court. 
Collins is up for re-election in 2020, and it won't be an easy race, considering she has received more donations from Texas fossil fuel industries than by human people in her state of Maine. In the first quarter of 2019, only 13 Maine residents gave Collins $200 or more. If Collins, a moderate Republican, wasn't already vulnerable enough, her opponent, who doesn't yet exist, has over $3 million waiting for them, thanks to donations raised by not fossil fuel industries, but actual people. It's unclear if Collins will put on one last face and reach across the aisle to grab money that isn't hers.